Hi, this is Phil Hinton and welcome to another video here on avforums.tv. Today we're with Jeff Boccaccio from DPL Labs and uh, we're here to discuss HDMI 1.4. So Jeff, um, just to, to get round the confusion of a new spec for HDMI, because yeah. people are still very confused with HDMI yeah. as it is, what does HDMI 1.4 contain and, and why is it important? 1.4 is basically um, the same thing as 1.3. The, um, uh, the overall bandwidth is about the same, it's still operating at 3.4 gigs per channel. Uh, what's new about it is some feature sets, and this is primarily in the uh, silicon side of the business. And uh, it's offering now uh, capabilities of 3D, 3D TV. We're going to get uh, uh, bigger screen resolutions available at uh, 4K, 2K. Uh, we're also going to have the ability for doing reverse audio so that now as your television sets may be plugged into Sky networks or some sort of cable systems, uh, you'll be able to take that audio and, uh, and send it back into your AVR so you can retrieve the, the audio from the, from the backwards uh, position. Uh, and also one of the big things that now 1.4 is going to offer is Ethernet capabilities. Uh, and the Ethernet uh, is going to allow for uh, uh, networking between those product lines, um, sharing and recording. Uh, between those products. So that's really the basics for that. As far as differences, uh, most of the differences is in the silicon. Um, as far as the cable and the interface is concerned, it's very, very minor. You can even use 1.3 products if you wanted to. The major difference between 1.4 characteristic cables and 1.3 characteristic cables is under 1.4 we, uh, we start using one extra wire that we had in the original 1.3 design that we never used. Out of the 19 pins we really only used four, 18 of them. There was one wire left over and so we're using that wire to transmit some Ethernet data and we're also using another wire on the hot plug detect side to incorporate Ethernet data. So since that's already on the wire the way it is now, it's really about the same. The difference is that these wires are probably going to have to get twisted because it's a balanced pair, a balanced line system. So in reality, uh, it's fully backwards compatible, which is good. Uh, there will be a change. If you wanted to run Ethernet, you'd have to get uh, uh, HDMI 1.4, uh, high speed or standard speed Ethernet cables, which is exactly the same thing we had before as 1.3 high speed or standard. So there really isn't much difference in this. The big difference is in the capabilities and the feature sets. And that's going to be a big selling point as we go into the next year. Now the, the only thing that should affect picture quality as well, Jeff, is the fact that it'll be able to handle higher resolution 4K, 2K system images. Yes. But that shouldn't affect image quality from cable to cable, should it? It shouldn't, no. The, uh, the actual bandwidth stays the same. We're still operating at 3.4 gigs per channel, 10.2 uh, overall. And you have to remember that 4K 2K is at 24 frames. It's not at 60. So we cut the bandwidth in half in order to get that thing to squeeze in there. So we can just squeeze in those higher resolutions within the format we're working with right now. Now there's a lot of confusion. It's one of the reasons why we don't review cables is that um, there's lots of uh, reviews out there, press comments and so on that from one cable to another, people are seeing deeper black levels, better white levels, color gradations better, and that kind of thing. Put, put us out of our misery, Jeff. It's impossible for that to be the case, isn't it? It really is. Um, once you have a substantial uh, signal level, and this is uh, at least on the video side, and that's uh, being able to produce a data level in, a, in an eye pattern format that is well away from the mask, um, as long as you're hooking up to the same television set, that is, uh, the different cables that you may use uh, would not make any difference in the way the picture quality would be. That's a fallacy. Now we're bound to see some myths start to form around HDMI 1.4. Um, we've listed the features that are there. Where do you think confusion may creep in for consumers and how can they check um, that the cable that they're going to buy is going to do the job that they need it, need it to do? Yeah, I think the main thing you're going to see as far as confusion is, uh, is the confusion among the manufacturers. You know, some of the manufacturers aren't really following this because many of the manufacturers don't actually make the cable. They have it, they actually purchase it from the Far East. So. They're trying to figure out what they're doing. Uh, they're not necessarily adopters, so they don't get the rights to look at the specifications the way we do. And also, the, uh, the big confusion is going to be when they start talking about resolution. Because I think a lot of guys, we did a show yesterday, as you know, uh, a good training course for a good amount of people, and a lot of those guys really thought that the cable was different because of the resolution change. And that was not true at all. We just 
basically got the same resolution at half the frame rate. So we're still within the same characteristics. The only big difference is going to be the Ethernet. And don't get scared over that. The only difference is maybe in the twist and the way the wire is done inside. So in reality, the actual cost of the wire shouldn't change at all. And um, how are DPL doing at the moment? And how are you going to move on when, when 1.4 comes along well, for testing? That's really for easy for us. DPL is doing extremely well. We have, uh, uh, we have a, a, a bunch of members now. We have uh, six other members in the sidelines waiting to get tested. Uh, it's working. We're getting better and better products. The manufacturers are really coming to the table. Uh, they're getting their grades, and if they're not good enough, they try to go back and get them even better. The interesting thing about DPL that I found since we started the project is that these competitors are now competing with actual performance levels. They're not competing anymore with the way they look or how much they cost. They're competing on what they can push out of this thing. And as that, as that pipe gets bigger and as the integrity gets better, the, the, and the end users, the installers, and the custom guys, and the, the actual customer, consumers themselves are going to have less and less problems. And we're already seeing that in the States. And you're going to start seeing it here too. So we're going to see that better and better. As far as 1.4 is concerned, it's a walk in the park for us. We already have the equipment to do it, and the only thing we have to take care of now, really, is looking over the, uh, the Ethernet lines, which is very, very simple to do. Now, Jeff, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Yeah. Um, we've done three videos now with yourself. Um, they're all very, very informative, and I just know that our forum members are going to have further questions for you. So what I want to do now is extend an invitation for you to come and join us uh, on, on an occasion at AV Forums, and maybe we can invite some of our forum members to ask questions of you, and maybe you could come in and reply on that. Would, oh, no, would that I, would be be, I would be so happy to do that. You know, the more we get that message out, the more the guys have some, a resource center to go to. Because we do the same thing in DPL, we have a resource center there. And we just fill it up. In, in fact, when 1.4 was announced, there was a joke. Our, our phones lit up. So we can do the same thing with AV Forum. You know, very simple. And that's all you have to do, Phil, is let me know what you want to do and I'm there for you. Well, Jeff, it's great to see you again. Great. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, sir. Take care of yourself.